This is Seven National News and in our top story. The Ministry of Labour has declared Thursday, the 1st of January 2015, as an official paid holiday for all private sector employees in the UAE to celebrate the new year. The announcement came following a statement issued by His Excellency Sakhar Ghubash, the UAE Minister of Labour, and added that employees of federal ministries and related entities will also have a holiday on Thursday, 1st of January 2015, as offices will be closed for the day to mark the new year. The announcement was earlier made earlier today by the Federal Authority for Government Human Resources. His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces and Chairman of the Abu Dhabi Executive Council, has chaired the Executive Council's meeting at the Crown Prince Court. In the meeting, the Council reviewed the developments in public work and ongoing and future projects, as well as the major achievements and service initiatives for nationals and expatriates. The Executive Council approved the healthcare sector strategy, which is aimed at improving the quality of healthcare services in the Emirate, in line with the highest international standards. The strategy has been given a budget of 120 million dirhams and will be implemented through 85 initiatives that Abu Dhabi Health Services has launched to develop Abu Dhabi's healthcare sector. Abu Dhabi government's health spending in 2013 went well over 18 billion dirhams, excluding capital spending. Also at the meeting, the Executive Council approved 2.4 billion dirhams worth of housing loans for 1,200 Emiratis in the three areas of the Emirate, including Emiratis in Abu Dhabi City, Al Ain City and Al Gharbiya, the western region, and will cover construction or completing new housing units. The Federal National Council has called for tailoring bespoke programs to train and qualify Emirati nationals so as to take up leadership role in the cooperative sector. The FNC members said during a debate on the policy of the Ministry of Social Affairs towards cooperative societies that these bodies needed to set aside a portion of their profits to build capacities of Emirati nationals and enable them to gain experiences and skills required to run the sector. The members also stressed the need for amending the federal law concerning cooperative associations so as to cope with the political and economic developments in the state and allow the consumer cooperative societies to open branches in other emirates. The new amendments should also consider equality between shareholders and voting rights and give these facilities preferential prices for water and electricity services. The recommendations also demanded the Ministry of Social Affairs to draw up in collaboration with the Ministry of Education and Media Institutions an annual plan for raising awareness about the role of these societies in the community. A new radar system introduced on Tuesday by Sharjah police will be able to catch drivers who use the hard shoulder, a practice which according to police puts lives at risk. Truck drivers who violate the truck ban, which restricts them on the roads from 5.30 in the morning to 9.30 in the morning, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. and from 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. are also being targeted by the Directorate of Traffic and Patrol's new system. According to reports, Sharjah police have finished the development of an advanced system for radars on the Emirates roads, with the radars equipped with a special program to catch offenders, whatever the offence may be. The police launched the advanced system after noticing an increase in traffic collisions resulting from driving on the hard shoulder. While the practice of overtaking others via the hard shoulder poses a danger to road users, the police also stated that it impedes ambulances and police cars as the hard shoulder is meant to be used only in emergencies by ambulances and police cars in order to save lives and provide urgent care. Violators face a 600 dirham fine and six black points on their driving license and the police are urging all road users to abide by traffic rules to protect their lives and lives of others. The Emirates Identity Authority has announced the closure of its customer services centre in Satwa with effect from Thursday the 18th of December. Ada clarified that the closure was due to the shift of Dubai Health Authority's centre for checking medical fitness to Karama. Officials from ADA in a statement said that the authority is in the process of opening a new centre in Karama in the, in the vicinity of the Dubai Health Authority's centre with the facility set to start functioning from March next year. Emirates ID called on customers to visit and seek services at its other centres in Dubai such as Barsha, Karama, Mohaisna, Al-Baraha or Rashidiyah. 
It also said that customers could contact the Emirates ID through its many communication channels, including the call centre number 600 The UAE Ministry of Health has approved the launch of a new drug for treating patients with type 2 diabetes called Trilicity, which is a weekly non-insulin injection and will now be available in the country. At a press conference, officials from the US-based pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly, together with representatives from the Ministry of Health, announced the marketing authorization for the new drug, which is an injectable solution designed to improve glycemic control in adults with type 2 diabetes. A unique feature about Trilicity is that it's not insulin. Rather, it acts like GLP-1, which is a natural hormone that helps the body release its own insulin when patients eat. As per the figures from the Diabetes Atlas from the International Diabetes Federation, 387 million people in the world are living with diabetes and around 46.3% are undiagnosed. According to the officials from Eli Lilly and company, the new drug, which will be an innovative treatment option, and comes with a pre-filled pen and can be taken any time of the day, with or even without meals. With regards to the directions of use, it should be injected subcutaneously in the abdomen, thigh or the upper arm. The officials further added that the approval from the UAE Ministry of Health comes weeks after receiving approval from the US Food and Drug Administration as well as the European Medicines Agency. Breast cancer is the most common form of cancer in women worldwide, accounting for 23% of all new cancer cases in women. It is estimated that 30% of females with early breast cancer go on to develop advanced disease. In the region, breast cancer is the most prevalent cancer in Arab women, constituting to 42% to of all female cancers. Advanced breast cancer, or ABC, is the most serious form of the disease. Stage 4, metastatic breast cancer, and stage 3, locally advanced breast cancer, means the disease has spread beyond the breast to other parts of the body, such as the brain and bones. In an effort to raise awareness and education on advanced breast cancer locally, the Novartis and the Friends of Cancer Patients organized a one-day exhibit titled I Am Not the Cancer. The art installation is part of the Here and Now Awareness program, which began in Europe to campaign for improved support and care for advanced breast cancer patients. Critically acclaimed sound and visual artists John Wynne and Tim Wainwright created the installation that depicted the real-life experience of living with advanced breast cancer through the patient's voice using a series of audio and filming techniques that resulted in an impactful and creative experience. The project started about a year and a half ago uh, and initially it was a one-off project working with three patients. Um, since then, uh, in, in different countries that we've shown it in, other patient groups see it and want us to take it elsewhere. Um, and we've uh, kind of added, in, in many cases, local patients to the, to the piece. Um, so we've, we have kind of developed a way of working through the, through the initial stages of the project, um, working with people to um, find ways of helping them relax and just tell their stories, which is why we actually record the sound separately from the video. Seeing the strength of women dealing with advanced breast cancer, um, it's not depressing at all, actually. It's quite, it's quite uh, life-affirming. For me, approaching this is, it, as an artistic way, it takes away the clinician. And what we found in our work is that if you remove the role of the clinician or we're going in as artists, then people seem to be able to speak far more freely. And they don't feel they have to please a doctor, please a therapist, please a nurse. They're just there to tell their story. There's none of that, that clinician um, stuff that sort of takes away their sort of freedom to express what they're thinking and feeling. To enable women to be able to tell their stories, it's, it's a great, great privilege. So the word I keep using seems to be privilege. So what I take away is that the privilege and very grateful for being able to be involved in that process. And finally in the bulletin. Emirates expects this week to be the busiest of the year as travellers head home or abroad for the holiday season. According to the airline, Friday is expected to be the busiest day, with over 80,000 people expected to travel on the 19th of December on over 240 Emirates flights. 
High passenger traffic is expected through to the 21st of December, with the top travel destinations out of Dubai, including London, Bangkok, Mumbai, Singapore, Paris and Karachi. To cope with the added rush, the airline has deployed extra staff at the airport to assist customers and is asking all travellers to be aware of check-in and gate closure timings. They have also recommended that passengers allow ample time to get through the various touch points at the airport. Emirates is reminding customers to arrive at the airport at least two hours before the flight and plan extra time to get to the airport as there may be heavy road traffic during the holiday period. Customers are also urged to look onto the Emirates, L Emirates online check-in services to save time, with passengers being reminded that those who check in less than 60 minutes before their scheduled flight departure will not be accepted. Reminders have also been issued to those travelling to the United States, Canada and the UK to charge their electronic devices before getting to the airport, as they will be required to switch on these devices at boarding gate screenings or risk being denied access to flight.